Okay. <clears throat> okay, here we are. So yesterday we introduced adjectives. Um, what do adjectives do, guys? Can you just remind me? What do we do with adjectives? Describe the nouns. They describe nouns, that's true. So true or false, adjectives always come before nouns. False. False. Jerry, tell me why I'm wrong. Um, because uh, always is a... Um... Serious matter. Uh, yeah, I can't say. So you could say the brown dog, can't you? Nothing wrong with that. The brown dog. That's a great restaurant. You can say that. But can you put the adjective afterwards? Yes. The restaurant ah. was great. The that, verb to be. The that, verb to be. Yeah. But it's sometimes other verbs as well, isn't it? You've got other verbs called linking verbs, which we'll look at next week. You could say... Mmm, this coffee. Is brown. This coffee. Mmm. What about what did I? Do? This coffee. This coffee smells. Smell. Smells <laughs> what? Uh, amazing. Smells good. I'm smells amazing. amazing. Smells amazing. delicious. Yeah. Smells delicious. heavenly. Yeah. yeah. So those linking verbs as well that we can put. So adjectives generally come before nouns in English but they can also come after with these linking verbs. And we'll look at that next week when we, when we introduce verbs. Um, okay, what we looked at towards the end of yesterday was comparisons. So if we open that now, um, yeah, we'll open that here. We looked at this, didn't we? Okay, we said that there were some irregular adjectives like bad and good. So bad becomes worse than and notice with these comparisons these we call them comparative forms notice with these comparatives there's always a than if there's no than then it's not a comparative okay you can't say paul is worse john you can't do that okay worse than better than and then we saw these adjectives Okay, what do these adjectives have in common? Small, large, cool, and hot. What do they have in common? One syllable. One syllable. Small, large, cool, hot, all one syllable. So what do we do? We add ER and then say than. ER, smaller than, larger than, cooler than, hotter than. Okay. So, can anyone tell me which one's hotter, the sun or the moon? The sun. Oh, is it only, only Sarah who knows that? Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, yeah. Okay, so yeah, so the sun is hotter than the moon, isn't it? Okay, super. Then we've got these ones. What do these, what do these adjectives have in common? Two vowels. Yeah. Two, not two vowels. No. Ending with Y. Two syllables. Two syllables, syllables, syllables. Y. Yeah. Two syllables ending in Y. Tiny, ugly, tidy. Can anyone think of any other adjectives ending in Y with two syllables? Funny. Funny, yeah. Funny. Pretty. Pretty. Shiny. Happy. Shiny. I like that. Happy. Happy. Steady. Heavy. Study. No, study's a noun, isn't it? Steady. Steady. Oh, steady. Steady. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, what yeah, would you, I'm thinking of an adjective that you would not like to be described as. Greedy. Ooh, Ugly. Greedy. Oh, yeah. greedy's a bad one. Yeah. What was that one? Ugly. Yeah. Ugly. Yeah. Ugly. We shall. Um, what's, a, what's a word that would be another word for being fat? Curvy. Overweight. No, curvy is actually curvy is curvy's got um a positive idea to it. If you're curvy, you might be a bit bigger, but you've got a nice body. Chubby. 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 Yeah. Chubby's like a soft way of saying overweight. Okay. What about if you're not very active and you like to stay in bed all day? Lazy. Lazy. Yeah. So we've got loads of adjectives with two syllables ending in Y, and you have to make a choice. Sometimes 
it's more common for it to be the most, and sometimes it's more common for it to be the tiniest in the, in the superlatives. Sorry, I'm just smashing all the pens on my desk. Um, and then these ones down here, these are longer adjectives, aren't they? Multiple syllables, not ending in Y. Afraid, terrifying, interesting, difficult. Okay, more afraid than, more terrifying than. And then you see these are the superlatives over here. The most difficult. Okay, when it's the small ones, the largest, we don't put most, we don't put more. So we'll see that as we go through our comparative forms, we'll see that there are more roles for the word more to play. Okay, what's the opposite of more? Less. It feels like that, doesn't it? Okay, now, that was a trick question. <laughs> okay, because more is the opposite of, bet, of less, sorry, is the opposite of less when you use adjectives. But what if it was more people? Less people. It's not less people. You can't say less people. <laughs> you are people. Let's say people. New people. Yeah. Because you less, are. less is with uncountable nouns. So more coffee, less coffee. It's with adjectives, more afraid, less afraid. But with countable nouns, it's more and fewer. So that's a bit of a tricky one there that you just, most native speakers make that mistake. I can remember when I was in the um, supermarket, when I was a child, there was a sign. They call it the express counter. So 10 items or... More than 10. So more than 10 would be on the other, on the other checkouts at the supermarket, but this would be 10 items or... Less, less than. than. Well, that's what people used to say. 10 items or less. It used to say it on the sign when I was young. Ah, but the, right. the right grammar is 10 items or fewer. Okay, so something to remember there. The kind of mistake that native speakers make that you can avoid. That means that you'd be better than them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to go through and we're going to have a look at other types of comparison. But first of all, let's just do some easy comparison exercises. So if I give you two minutes now, in fact, not even two, I'm going to give you one and a half minutes. Okay, just to go through those five. And then I just want you to give me the basic form. I don't want you to go crazy. Don't be doing loads of new different types of comparisons that we haven't looked at yet. I just want you to use this box really as, as, as guidance. So intelligent, that's a long adjective, isn't it? Okay, so you have to make comparisons. In the first one, my brother and me. In the second one, Mount Everest, Ben Nevis. And you might recognize that. My soup, Harry's soup, Chennai average temperature. Manchester average temperature, Peter's phone, Bert's phone. I just want you to make some really simple comparisons. One minute and a half starts now. Okay, 20 seconds left. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Um, Elder, are you there? 
Yes, I'm here. Okay, tell me about my brother and me. Um, my my brother is more clever than me. Well, actually, so well, look, the the adjective I wanted to use is here. Ah, oh, intelligent. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. My brother is more intelligent than me. Than, than me. Um. Okay. Now, I I I think that the grammar is fine, but not more clever. It's a weird one, clever. But we'll we'll look at that in a minute. But that's not true, is it? No, it's not. Are you I'm sure about that? Yes. My brother, stupid. Me, clever. I didn't know where to put stupid. I didn't no, no, know you don't to... have to. You have to use the word intelligent. The important thing here is, is my brother more intelligent than me? Or am I more intelligent than him? He had the way they no. say... He's more. I am, I am more intelligent than him. I am more, uh, more intelligent than him. So this is what's interesting about comparatives, okay? And what's also difficult. You know that whenever whenever I know that there's flexibility and, and a, a range of ways of doing things, that's when it becomes complex, it becomes difficult. So mm -hmm. I could say my brother, so this should be my brother is less. Less intelligent. Yeah, and I am more intelligent than him. Than my brother, yeah. Now, what we'll see is already, already, just by using the words less and more, we've got two different ways of saying exactly the same thing. And as we go through these different forms of comparative, you'll see that we can say the same thing in about 10 different ways by using things like not, more, and less. And you can see that there's, and, and then changing the adjective as well helps, okay? Yeah. It, it changes things. So for instance, what if I focused on the word stupid here as my adjective? I would say my brother is what? <laughs> less less more stupid. stupid. More stupid than me. Stupid, yeah. Okay, now these all of these sentences mean the same thing, don't they? Okay, yeah. I am less stupid. Than you, yeah. Than my brother. We've, now we've got four sentences that mean exactly the same thing. What have we changed? We've changed less, we've changed more, we've changed stupid, we've changed intelligent. I, this can keep going as long as I've got more and more and more and more adjectives. So there's a lot of flexibility in these comparisons. And once we learn the other structures, there's a whole world of comparison to do. Okay, let's do the next one. Thanks, Elda. Uh, Ridma, are you there, Ridma? Thank you. Okay. Yes. Hi, Ridma. Okay, tell me about Hi. Mount Everest and Ben Nevis then. Yeah, Mount Everest is taller than uh, Ben Nevis. Brilliant. Do you know where Ben Nevis is, Ridma? No, sir. Um, in Scotland. Ah, uh, yeah. Yep. So if if now this is a weird one as well because when we talk about people, you could say Paul is taller than Alan. Okay. But when you use mountains and people, the word for less is not the same. So if you'd say Alan is shorter than Paul, but you wouldn't say Ben Nevis is shorter than Mount Everest, what would you say? Tall. Ben Nevis is smaller. 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 He's smaller than. Yeah. And we're just doing the simple ones here, Neil. We're not using as yet. Yeah, that gets a bit more complex. So Ben Nevis is smaller than. Um, sorry. Then. Sorry. I've just put Ben Nevis there, haven't I, again? Sorry. Mount Everest. Yeah. So Ben Nevis is smaller than Mount Everest. That's true. Look how much bigger it is. Can you believe it? That's the tallest mountain in Scotland. This one. Wow. It's like six yeah. times bigger. It's crazy. Mount Everest is huge. Um, has anyone ever seen Mount Everest? <laughs> no. On the television. In Just Peter. on the television. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I know we've had people from Nepal in the class before. And from North India, you can see uh, Mount Everest as well when the sky is clear, can't you? And Pakistan, surely. Yes, we can see sometimes. Yeah. K2, was, K2 in Pakistan, yeah. K2 
K2. Isn't it true that when uh, during the first COVID lockdown and the pollution dropped? Yes. So. Yeah. See. <laughs> yes. That's the amazing. sky is clear. We can it, see. I suppose it was like stepping back 400 years, wasn't it? And seeing what it looked like in the past. Yeah. Wow, it's amazing. Okay. So um, you're there, Prinkle. Um, my yes. soup, delicious, of course. And yes. Harry's soup, bland. So do you know what yes. bland means? Yes, not tasty, uh, not spicy. Okay, yeah, no flavor. Yeah, okay. Yes. So what would you say then? Uh, my soup is more delicious than Harry's soups. Well, tell me about this tasty. one. Uh, it's tasty? Yes. Yeah. Tastier. Yeah, well, we could say tastier, couldn't we? Yes. Or we could say... Taste. More, more delicious than... Or more tasty than... More tasty more than... Tasty. Do I have to say Harry's soup? No. Yeah. Or can I just say Harry's? Yes. I no, can just say Harry's. Harry's. Yeah, that's fine. I can do it because here it's a it's like a possessive pronoun almost. Because okay. I've already mentioned soup, so I know that you're talking about. I know that you don't mean Harry's phone. In the writing, we also write this way, or only in speaking. Um, well, I can't imagine this this bit this particular thing now comparatives will come up in the speaking and possibly even in the writing but i can't imagine this little thing will come up but yeah so my soup is tastier more tasty than harry's so that means harry's soup is what not delicious not delicious no, not well, it's less, less harry's soup is taste worse than mine uh, well you can't say worse can you why because worse is already a comparative okay yeah so Let's think about it. Harry's soup is worse than mine. Remember, let's go back up to the top. Means my, my soup is bad. My soup, <laughs> your soup is bad. I don't believe it, Prinko. I bet your soup's great. Yeah. So worse than is already a comparative. You don't say worse. It's just imagine you don't say betterer. Yeah. Okay. So I know it, it doesn't seem like a comparative, but it is worse it's not worser okay all right so harry soup is worse than mine that means my soup is better 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 than harry's yeah so there's loads of different ways aren't there for us to do it already these all mean the same thing basically okay chennai average temperature so warm chennai is warm warmer than manchester than manchester yeah now you wouldn't say less warm would you would you say less warm it's a weird one isn't it you wouldn't say that you'd say manchester is colder 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 yeah yeah that's what you do so we're just going to go through these quickly peter's phone 45 pounds bert's phone 468 can you believe it so Bert's phone, Bert's phone is, is more expensive. It is. Yeah, Bert's phone is more expensive. And Peter's phone, or Peter's. Yeah. So if I started the sentence with Peter's phone is less, less, less expensive. I could do that. Is there another way? Cheaper. 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 Yeah. Cheaper. So as, as long as you've got a good vocabulary, Got loads of different ways of saying and comparing these things. Yeah. Okay. Are we okay with these basic forms of comparative then? Sounded like we were quite strong on that. Okay. Be careful about worse, be careful about better. Um, but let's go and have a look at some others because. This is not the only way that people make comparisons. You will see, especially in the reading part C, some of the structures that we're going to look at now. So let's put these all on the same page. More noun than. More noun than. Now this is, it's gonna seem a bit strange at first. We've got some great sentences here. So, um, tigers, okay. Tigers versus chickens. Tigers versus chickens. Which one is there more of? Chickens. 
kickers. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Is it Tiger is more ag aggressive than Oh, chicken. okay. But that doesn't work here, Lucas, though, does it? Because I'm looking for more now. Powerful, mm -hmm. maybe. Up here, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. Uh, is that true? Tigers are more aggressive than chickens. I don't know if that's true. Because <laughs> <laughs> they, do, they do chicken fights in some places, don't they? Chicken fights. Chickens are more aggressive chickens than fights than without reason. Chickens are, chickens are very aggressive, especially the male chickens, aren't they? Um, but yeah, tigers are quite aggressive as well, especially if they're hungry. Yeah. Okay. But I'm not looking for that simple comparative. Okay, with aggressive, it's it's absolutely good. It's good grammar. Aggressive is a long adjective, so it would have more in front of it. So you're right, but that's not what I'm after. Okay, I'm going to introduce again. Well, I'm going to reintroduce the phrase "there is" and "there are." There are more, chicken. more chickens than tigers. Tiger. Yeah. Now it's not very common for us to say it without some kind of preposition phrase at the end, okay? But if you think about it, where am I talking about? Where? Poultry farm. The Poultry farm, farm for sure, yeah. In, <laughs> yeah. in UK. In, in the world. UK. Well, in the actually, world. I'm not specifying the place, am I? So Baron's absolutely general. right. It's in the world in general. There are more chickens than tigers. In fact, have you ever heard this fact? Apparently that's true. There are yeah. more chickens than humans. Than humans. Really? Yeah. yeah, apparently there's some, is, there are 8 billion humans, aren't there? Is that right, 8 billion? I think it's something like there are always 10 billion chickens on the planet. Absolutely crazy, crazy chicken consumption. <laughs> Um, so there are more chickens than tigers. But look what we've done. Okay, we've used, I said before that we would use the word more in a different way. So it can go in front of nouns. So there are more chickens than tigers. So we've got more, there it is. And we've got chickens as our noun. And we're going to start playing with this structure. So there are more chickens than tigers. Now we can make that more complicated by putting a preposition phrase after the noun. So let's say, um, let's say India, okay? There are more chickens in India than tigers. Oops. So we've got the same thing. There are more chickens. There's a noun. Prepositional phrase in India than tigers. So what do we think about that? Are we happy with that? Any questions about it? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's specified, specify, isn't it? It's starting. Yeah. It's saying where. Yeah. Okay, it's saying where something is, and that's often what prepositions do, isn't it? Can be used more, yeah. it can be used, there are a few virtue constant tigers. Yeah, I love it. There are fewer uh, tigers in India okay. than chickens. Okay. Okay, so that's the way around it would be. If we're, if we're trying to say exactly the same thing, fewer, then we've got tigers. And then we've got in India as our prepositional phrase. Okay. Now I can play around with that. I can say in India, there are fewer tigers than chickens. I could say there are fewer tigers than chickens in India. So I can move that prepositional phrase around if I want to. It can go at the beginning, it can go in the middle, or it can go in the end. But where it can't go is here. You can't say there are fewer tigers than in India, chickens. You can't do that, okay? But you can move it around. So let's just show how that can be done. 
Okay, in India, this prepositional phrase can go at the beginning. Oops. Just like any prepositional phrase, but it does confuse the, um, it confuses the comparatives sometimes. Okay, people sometimes get mixed up with it. So let's take this one again, and we can also put it at the end. Now, the reason that I'm going through this is because you're going to see some other forms. And what happens is when you start trying to say it, the sentences start to feel like they're made of lots of bits. And that starts to get a bit confusing. So it's important to get these, these things right and see how it becomes more, more complex. Because now look, we're starting to add other things in. So again, I'm gonna use that phrase, there are, okay. Now I can also do, I can do it with, in fact, let me, let me do this. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it like that. And then we'll look at the next bit. I'm gonna put prepositional phrase here as well. So let's do it with there are. Now I can say, with the comparative, <clears throat> I can say there are more, sorry, there is, sorry, a, a higher number of chickens in India than tigers. I can also do something else a little bit strange. Look at something else I can do. I can compare India to another country. There is a higher number of chickens in India than tigers. Now I'm comparing the chickens to the tigers. And here I'm doing there is a higher number of chickens in India, but I have to put than, what do I have to put before China? In China. Yeah. In, then in India. Yeah. Okay, in. now let's just go through and look at it again. I've got there is, then I've got a and a comparative. Then I've got a noun. What? Where's the noun? India. Chickens, a number of chickens. A higher really. number of chickens. Number, number of, of chickens, chickens in India. Okay, it's a number of chickens, isn't it? Yes. And then I've got a prepositional phrase here. In India. In India. And then in, in this one, I've got the same thing. A higher, okay, is going to be our a plus a comparison. And then I've got number of chickens. No. Then I've got in India. And then I've got another prepositional phrase after yeah, the that, haven't China. I? Now, this is one way of looking at it. So what we're doing. And notice before, in the past, I've said there are, there's more than one way to look at a sentence. So the people who um, stole my car are over there. Now, if you remember, we talked about this and we said that this is a... Relative clause. It's a relative clause. It's a defining relative clause. Defining. So there are different ways of looking at this. You can say this is the noun phrase the people who stole my car, that's the subject and there's the verb. Or you can look at it as the people and then this is a defining relative clause. So there's more than one way to cut a sentence. Now, if you think about it, really, because we're trying to work out where the comparative is in this one, I've cut it a different way. But really, there is, this is a noun. That is a noun. Ah always comes before a noun, doesn't it? So it's a higher number of chickens in India. It's like saying there is um, there is a city in Spain. Just the same thing. A city is a noun. Just exactly the same thing. So I know it seems a bit complicated but I'm going to make it a little bit more complicated. Okay, and then we'll do, we'll do some 
practice on it. Okay, now we've got a comparative noun and a verb phrase. Okay, so how about this one? Um, hmm. Okay, a higher number of people live in the countryside in um, Pakistan than in um, Japan. Now, I think everyone understands that sentence. Um, where, where are there more people living in the countryside? In Pakistan. In Pakistan. Okay, now let's just go through and have a look at the grammar. So we've got a and a comparative, a higher. Then we've got number of people. That's wow. going to be our noun. And then what have we got? We've got a verb, haven't we? Okay, but it's live in the countryside. That's our verb phrase here. That's what those people do. In fact, let's make it a different color. We'll make it blue. Okay. In Pakistan, what's that? Preposition. 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 Frame. Preposition. Than in Japan. Preposition. <sighs> okay. So let's just go through that again. Okay. A higher. That's a comparative, isn't it? A higher number. Okay. A higher number of people, number of people is that now live in the countryside in Pakistan than in Japan. I can make it easier. More. What do more people do? Live in countryside. Live, live in countryside. Live in the countryside. Where? In, pa in, in Pakistan. Pakistan. Okay, in Pakistan. Then Japan. Than in Japan. In. in. Than in Japan. Okay. Comparative is here. Noun is here. What do they do? They live in the countryside. That's what they do. Yeah. Uh, sorry, let me make that blue. I meant to make that blue. That's our verb phrase. That's what they do. Where do they do it? In Pakistan. And then we compare against Japan. So what we've done is we've progressively stepped through these comparatives and made them more complicated as we've gone through. Now, what is possible? Okay, what's possible is making errors. It's really easy to make errors with this because this prepositional phrase might get put in the wrong place or the noun gets put in the wrong place, or we don't use a comparative. We say something like, there is a high number of chickens in India than tigers, but you can't use a normal adjective with that, that doesn't work. Or we put the verb phrase in the wrong place. So I think that that's quite complicated. So what we should do is we should think about doing a little bit of practice. Let's make some comparisons. So, <clears throat> Anyone, give me a noun, please. Anyone, any noun. On a black cat. Black cat. Okay. Um, and let's put let's put brown cat. Actually, no, let's put let's put um, ginger cat. Any what's a, what's another word for ginger in, in terms of cats? Red. Not orange. Red. Orange. Orange. Yeah, orange would be ginger. Okay, so black cat, ginger cat on my street. Okay, so black cat, four. Ginger cat, two. Okay, so you can say if you want, you can use the, you could use the verb to live, couldn't you? Because you could say that they live there. Or you could use there, there are more. There are. So you've got different ways of writing these sentences. So let's do it now. I could say there are more black cats where? 
on my street, my street. On my street. On my street. than what? Um, than ginger. Ginger, ginger cats. cats. Ginger ginger cats. cats. There are more black cats on my street than ginger cats. That's a really nice way to do it. How about I put there is a, a what? A higher number. A higher number of, higher black, number cats of, black, of black cats, cats. Yeah. on my street than ginger, ginger, cats. ginger cats. Ginger cats. Okay. What about a higher number of what? Of black black cats. cats. What do they do? Lives. Live, lives. not lives. No, not yet. Live Please. on my street than then ginger cat. Ginger, ginger cat. It's great, isn't it? Look at those different sentences we've got. Uh, can I have a question, please? Of course, yeah. Uh, on the last sentence, can we add uh, a higher number of black cats live on my street than ginger cats live? Can we add the um, sentence like that? No, that you're not emphasizing there. You're just putting a word that's unnecessary at the end. Yeah, you don't need to put live again. Is it grammatically correct? It's grammatically incorrect. Okay. It sounds like the beginning of a new sentence. Yeah, you know, you're trying to say what ginger cats live somewhere else or something like that. So you just don't need that word there at all. Okay. Okay, let's have another noun. Any noun? Car. Doctor and engineer. Doctor and an engineer. Okay, <laughs> doctor versus engineer. Um, and then we'll put um, my family. Okay, so doctor, three. Mm. En engineer, seven. Oh dear. Wow. Okay, it's a big family. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a minute just to write down on your paper. What do you think it should be? Okay, so one minute, just come up with a couple of different ways of saying the same thing. Wow, Anil, there are 20, 25 billion chickens, <laughs> nearly 26, <laughs> and there are only 8 billion people. That is crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Three chickens for every person. Okay, 30 seconds left. Your math's amazing, sir. <laughs> no, my arithmetic is, is basic. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we've got one sentence. Okay, the higher number, uh, the higher number of doctors and engineers in my family. There's one submission we've had. Okay, excellent. That's one minute. Okay, we've got a few more from Bernice. Oh, I didn't write anything then. The higher number of doctors than engineers in my family. Okay, then we've got, I think, yeah, that one's one. Um, oh, I like that one from, from Cherry, okay. Um, what else have we got here? Okay, right, so we've got some classic errors here. Uh, wrong one, that one, sorry, let me get it again. Classic errors. Typical and understandable errors. Okay, so first one. We can't really have the first one, can we, guys? It doesn't oh. really, It's not really the higher number of doctors than engineers in my family. There's no verb. There's that. So you have to say there, there is a higher number of doctors than engineers in my family. And I like this prepositional phrase at the end. That's fine, I'm happy with that. Okay, but you've got to put this bit in. If you don't put that bit in, then there's no verb in the sentence and you have to have a verb. Let's go back, look at it. Can anyone see a verb? No. No verb. If there's no verb, there's no sentence. 
okay it's like a feast with no food okay <laughs> so there is a higher number of doctors than engineers in my family there are more engineers in my family than doctors are you happy with that one guys what do you think yes. Does any, anyone disagree or i think it's okay oh, it's okay it's fine, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Just because I ask, it doesn't mean there's something wrong. Yeah. Okay. How about this one? A higher number of engineers are in my family than doctors. Hmm. A higher number of engineers are in. Now, I like R because engineers yeah. requires, requires R, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm happy with that. I mean, I don't think I'd ever say that sentence. It doesn't sound 100% natural English, but it's perfect. You know, the grammar's fine. There's no problem with it at all. What about the last one? The number of engineers is more than engineers. Oh, let's, put, let's put doctors here. I think that that's what they meant. The number of engineers is more than doctors in my family. Mm. Is high. Is more important. Is no, we wouldn't put important in there. But, Yes, the number of engineers is higher. Uh, you can't say there's more number. You can't, you can't say more number, can you? Or less number. Okay, it's a higher number or what? Fewer. Few. Can't say fewer with number. No, Fewer. it's lower. No. No. So the number of engineers is higher the doctors in my family. If it was the other way around, it would be the number of doctors is lower than engineers in my family. Okay. What about there are fewer engineer, uh, there are fewer doctor in my family than. Um... I love it. Okay, I done there that. Are, there are fewer. There are fewer, fewer doctors, doctors on my, in my family than engineers. Yeah. Brilliant. I'm very happy with that. That's good. Okay, so we can see there's a lot of flexibility with it. When you talk about numbers and amounts, you talk about higher and lower. So it's something that we should look at now. So more can be with um, adjectives, or it can be with countable nouns, fewer can be with countable nouns. Less can be with uncountable nouns and adjectives. Okay, adjectives and uncountable nouns. Um, lower and higher. Higher is with things like amount, a number total can go there as well. Lower again with amount, number, and total. So very, very useful. And much? Um, well, much is used to um, to emphasize the difference. So I could say that there are more. Uh, well, no, there is there is more coffee in my house than in yours. So let's just say that in your house, you've got one kilogram of coffee. And in my house, I've got 4,000 kilograms. There's much more coffee in my house than in yours. If it was countable, it would be many. Okay. To emphasize big difference. in uncountable, okay, and adjectives, okay, and many is to emphasize big differences I can just hear some, someone eating an apple, <laughs> just going to mute everyone, okay um okay uh, to emphasize big differences in countable nouns so if it's people 
let's say that we both have a party, Bianca. And at your party, there are 150 people. And at my party, there are seven. There are many more people in your house than in my house. So when we come back tomorrow, we'll do a bit more of a review of this. Okay. And we'll also look at as adjective as, which is also quite complicated. Okay. So we're going to make... We're going to be doing loads of comparisons this week. Anybody got any questions at the moment on these ones? Uh, sir. Yes. I have, I have a question. Okay. Can you use uh, more and less with the nature? More and less with nature? Yeah. Like what? Give me an example. What's the noun? Really? Like, uh, like with mountains or with with stars or these kind of things. Mountains and stars. Humans. Give me a, well, what do you want to do? Do you want to say there are more stars in the sky than there are mountains on earth? Mm, yeah. Yeah. There are more stars in the sky than there are mountains on earth. It's a lovely sentence, isn't it? Yeah. That's a really nice one, but let's look at the grammar. We've got there are at the beginning. We've got more as our comparative. Okay, there's our comparative. Then we've got the noun. In the sky, what's that? Prepositional phrase. Preposition. Prepositional phrase for us there. Then we've got than. Then we've got there are again. And then we can put mountains. There's another noun. And now we've got a different preposition, but it's still a prepositional phrase. Now, you don't have to put there are. There are more stars in the sky than mountains on Earth. What do you think about that, Anil? It is true. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, I think it's true. I assume it's true, considering there are trillions of stars in the sky. Um, I don't think there are trillions of mountains, but there must be billions. Okay. So, any more questions about comparatives? I have one question. Go on, Chari. Uh, can I say uh, Ben Nevis is uh, less higher than Mount Everest? Okay, let's have a look. Okay, now. Hmm. There's one big grammatical problem with that sentence. Can anyone tell me what the, the problem is? Yeah, two, two comparative less, less and higher. higher. Yeah, you can't say less higher. You can say less high, can't you? Um, and that would make sense now. Ben Nevis is less high than Mount Everest. If you said that, everyone would understand it. But nobody would ever say it. They would just, they would either say Mount Everest is higher or taller than Ben Nevis, or they'd say Ben Nevis is smaller than. But yeah, that is fine. Now, you can do it grammatically. It's just not common to do it. That's the thing. Even though you could say something can be um, perfect grammatically, but it's unconventional. Unconventional means that's not the way we normally do it. You know, you know what it's like. You can tell when someone's not from your part of the country because they say things in a, in a different way. The way that they say things is not conventional in, in your way. There's a, famous, there's a famous movie with Quentin Tarantino, by Quentin Tarantino, set in Germany. And an English person is pretending to be German. And he puts his hand up and he says, I'll have three beers. And everyone there realizes that he's not German anymore. <laughs> Why do they know he's not German? Three beers. Uh, German likes more than three. <laughs> well, I don't know if they like more than the British, but yeah, but this is how English or British people say three. In Germany, they do that. Oh, okay. So that's that's okay. conventional. <laughs> <laughs> That's not wrong, is it? 
That's not wrong. Yeah. You can jump through, yeah. but it's yeah. not conventional. So this phrase, yeah. and Nevis is less high than Mount Everest, it's fine, but no one would say it. Oh. Okay, that's the, 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 the long answer. Okay, so let's finish there. Good work. Well done, everyone. Um, and I'll, I'll see you later on for, uh, for some speaking club. Okay? Thank you, Paul. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.